Uncharted 4 multiplayer. Yeah, this game sucks. Naughty Dog is known for their storytelling in games that are near perfection. But all you have to do is look to your left and see this abomination. <laughs> Multiplayers are meant to be fun, filled with creativity, but U4 manages to be the complete opposite of that. I looked online to see if anyone talked about this multiplayer, and outside of a couple short commentaries, there really isn't much. And I don't think anyone's gonna make a video anytime soon, so I thought, why not my lame ass? Even though a lot of people don't like this game, it's still worth taking a look at the anomalous state of Uncharted 4 multiplayer. This chapter, we're gonna dive into features, content, pretty much things that U4 has to offer. I'm not gonna talk about everything, because if I did, we'd be here forever. There's weapons I'm gonna skip, there's features I'm gonna skip. A lot of it is simply just not worth talking about. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. Like, I'm literally gonna speed run this. And also, I like giving my opinion. I like talking shit. I'm not gonna sit here and talk through everything like I'm an NPC, but I do think a lot of it is important, or at least important enough for a video. But if you have no interest in hearing me yap about it and you just wanna get into the drama, you can skip to this timestamp right here. So if you're one of the people who stayed, hey, how's your day? Let's talk about some U4. Like I said, I'm going to speed run this. I'm not going to spend any more than 10 seconds on a weapon, well, except for a slept view. I know hearing me talk about content isn't the most interesting thing in the world, but you'll understand why I talked about it later. The Copperhead. This thing is busted. It has a pinpoint reticle and a high fire rate. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this thing can three tap you. There's interactions where I literally die in half a second. The FAL or the foul, whatever. There's definitely a skill gap. It's not that good if you give it to someone who doesn't know how to use it. If you give it to someone who's been mastering it the past eight years, and it can be unfair. The GX3. I recorded all this footage a while ago. And and the first time I used this gun, I thought it was the worst weapon in U4, but I came back to it and realized that it has a lot of potential. It doesn't have that much aim assist and the range is god awful, but if you hit your shots with this thing, it could have the fastest TTK in the game. The Harrison is different, I think that's the word I'm gonna go with. I don't think it was ever meant to be taken seriously, it's kind of just a meme gun. It's still pretty good though, if you get a headshot, you pretty much win that interaction. The HS. Oh boy, here we go. You're no life if you mean this weapon. Like I get it, it's one of the easiest guns to use in the game, but can you try to be original? Range, max size, damage, very little bloom, recoil. It's superior in almost every way. The low or to allow whatever you want to call it. Think of this as the HS with the reticle of an AK. I have respect for people who use it because they could easily just pull out an HS. The M14. This one's weird because as a sniper rifle, it's whack as hell. Seeing it as another weapon though, it's pretty good. If it one shot to the head, I'd like it a lot more, but I guess I can kind of see why they didn't do that. The Mazer, the Muzzer, whatever the f See, this one's weird for me because if you use it the way it was intended, it's honestly pretty good. But if you're aggressive like I am and you just rush people all the time, it might be the worst weapon in the game. Like I get it, you're not supposed to play like this, but it was possible in the past two multiplayers. I mean, it's even possible in factions. It also has bloom i don't know whose idea that was the metler is really good i can't make up my mind whether or not it's op because there is a huge skill gap but i'm just gonna say it is for the sake of the video if you want to be annoying and get people flinch use the metler the mp34 occasionally whenever someone's using the mp34 they can dominate the entire lobby but when i use it i just wasn't getting that same energy it might be a skill issue maybe i was using the wrong attachments i still think it's pretty good regardless ah uh, yes the pack 80 this thing is garbage easily the worst weapon in u4 you think that since it's an lmg it would have a chance of killing you long range right Nope. Do me a favor and watch this. And on top of that, it only gives you 10 bullets per ammo pickup. Half the match is me looking for more ammo. This was Zadi, Swazodi, whatever the f This thing is more cheesy than it is reliable. If you pop shot and do that thing where you blind fire and cover, just don't be that guy. That's so toxic. The Type 95. Another weapon I thought would be garbage, but is honestly pretty good. It's pretty easy to control. It's very easy to stay on target with this thing, you know? The XCR. I think a lot of people say that this is the worst weapon in U4. Personally, I think it's the Pack 80. Because up close, the XCR melts you, but to be honest, that's all it's good for. The Aegis, I think that's how you pronounce it. There's a couple pistols that don't have a fire rate cap, and the Aegis is one of them like it just takes a decent trigger finger and this thing turns into an ar the argue wall this thing hits like a truck it has no business doing this much damage let me show you this clip right headshot body shot dead yep definitely balanced it has a three times headshot multiplier like who thought it was a good idea there's some people who say that the bishai is one of the best weapons and yeah i can see why they say that all it takes is a decent shot and this thing turns into a pocket sniper rifle getting a headshot on someone sweating with the hs is just Mm, the DC single action. I describe it as a pocket Harrison, but it does have a lot of fall off. I have respect for people who use the DC. It's one of the very few pistols that take skill. The Enforcer is another weapon that has an uncapped fire rate. I don't need to explain why it's broken. You get the point. The Foes is a pocket SMG. I don't think it's that good, but it performs way too well for a pistol. The Chakao. This weapon's so goddamn confusing. The base max size is six bullets. So whenever I get a body shot, headshot, body shot, hit marker, you can visibly see my confusion on how the f I did not kill that guy. It might be fall off damage. It might be a skill issue. I don't care. This gun fing sucks. The Crevasse. Oh my god. Okay. This is the easiest gun to use in the game it has some of the best range and recoil and its headshot damage is straight up unjustified i can't believe this pistol wasn't the turning point you think that after the devs saw the performance they'd be like all right guys maybe we should reconsider and rebalance the pistols and not make them this good 
Nope. Add it to the game and make it one LP. Excuse me! Excuse me! It is literally classified as a heavy weapon in the Lost Legacy. And the fact that it's locked behind a paywall makes it even worse. The micro is pretty much a foes of it with an easier recoil pattern. There's not much to say about it. It's even more busted. The Par 45. This pistol is almost OP, but thankfully it has a fire rate cap. It's still pretty good though. It's practically a primary. The Par 9. I don't get why they nerfed the Par so hard. In U3, it was the best pistol in the game, but in U4, it's like one of the worst. Don't get me wrong. I think it's still viable. It's still a decent secondary. But in comparison to the other pistols, yeah, it's not that good. The Rapica. This is by far the best remake of any OG weapon. What is it with Naughty Dog and making burst weapons so good in each game they make? I can't lie. You kind of got to get used to how it feels, but it's still really good. The RKL, or how I like to call it the R Kelly, because only people under the age of 14 would use this. But I still think it's pretty good. Just in comparison to the other full auto pistols, it gets outperformed. I think the ARX is probably the best heavy weapon. Its fire rate is just stupid. Pretty sure it has the fastest TTK. It also has the highest bullet per dollar. It gives you 60 bullets. That's way too much. The Barak 44. It's a typical two shot to the body, one shot to the head revolver that every multiplayer has. It's good if you hit your shots, but if you're bad, then you probably hate this weapon. The channel lake is cheesy. If you use it, it's either because you're garbage or you're trolling and you're purposely annoying people. If it wasn't for the stun lock, it wouldn't be nearly as toxic, but typical Naughty Dog fashion, making everything 10 times more overpowered than it needs to be. The Condor is easily one of the most annoying weapons to go against. It's capable of a one shot, one kill, and it gives you six bullets per purchase. I swear, people just never run out of ammo. If you buy three Condors, it gives you 18 bullets. That's insane. If someone pulls up to you in the open with a Condor, you might as well give up because you're not going to win. The Harbinger Sniper. Eh, it's okay. It honestly feels like a Miserva with a slight faster fire rate. The unique thing about it is that a headshot is an instant KO, meaning they don't go down, they just die. If it wasn't for this, it may have been the worst heavy weapon. But I still don't think it's worth using that much considering that each bullet costs $300. And you're also punished for getting headshots because you get a lot less money for it. I can't believe we got this instead of a T-Bolt. It's honestly just depressing. The RPG is the worst heavy weapon in the game. Look, I know it needed a nerf because of the previous multiplayer, but god damn, it didn't deserve to be hit this hard. They gave it bloom, meaning it can go wherever it wants after you shoot it. So it's kind of just a coin flip whether or not you're going to get that kill. Bro, even with lock on aim, it can still miss. It's so inaccurate that even with an aim bot, it can still miss. The C4 is... Well, it's a C4. You throw it, you wait a second or two, then you detonate. It's not that hard to counter. It beeps. You can sometimes see it through the wall. The only issue is that you can detonate it while you're down. This might be one of the stupidest fucking mechanics in U4. It makes no sense why you can kill people when you're already down. The grenades in this game make zero sense. Aside from the HS, it's definitely what's killed me the most. Like, these are not grenades. They're explosive rubber balls. The strat isn't to throw them at the enemy, but to throw it at the ground, have it bounce 10 feet in the air, and make it practically impossible to escape. The revive pack. Jesus Christ. Where do I even start? This is the most OP weapon, item. It's the most OP thing in U4. How do I know this? If one team has rest packs and the other one doesn't, that team loses nearly 100% of the time. God damn! Oh, Oh my <laughs> God. I lost that match a second. I saw somebody get done. I saw four packs go off. Not only is the radius unimaginably huge, but you can one hand this bitch anywhere in the map. It has a fast throw speed. You can go through walls. You can hold two at a time. It has a cooldown of 40 seconds. And we're not even going to talk about the amount of boosters that decrease your cooldown time for gear. Oh, and did I mention that it only costs two LP? And on top of all that, as if it wasn't enough, it can res you to full HP in just under two seconds. The devs of Uncharted 4 multiplayer don't need to be involved in the balancing of any multiplayer ever again. Not even multiplayers, just games in general. I wouldn't trust these motherfuckers with Tetris. The smoke grenades are straight up just annoying. So before I show you how it works, let's look at some other MPs to see how they balance their smoke grenades. Let's start with factions. How about 29 seconds? How about Row Company? 13 seconds. Call of Duty? About seven seconds. Now let's look at U4. Like, how do you have a job? The duration of the smoke grenade is literally shorter than the cooldown, and you can carry two at a time. And with there being no counter to it, there's literally nothing you can do about it. The Chintamani Stone. It's pretty much a res pack, but on steroids. As if revives weren't annoying enough, they go on to add something that makes it instantaneous, and there's also a mod that lets you get resed at full HP. The Indra is quite possibly the most toxic thing in U4. If someone throws it at you, it decreases your overall speed by around 70%, I think. I think the consensus on the Indra is pretty unanimous. Everyone agrees that this thing is just revolting. This mystical is the reason why no one wants to play objective modes anymore they spawn so many injuries one of them despawned i'm not even people always throw this on victory hill just to get a cheesy win oh, 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 oh.
If you and a teammate is jump scared by a ninja, you're dead. Every time I think about playing this multiplayer, the word ninja pops up into my head. Then I change my mind and go play Mario Kart or something. The Path of Ninja is one of the two mysticals that I don't necessarily have an issue with. Aim just had a teammate anywhere in the map and it makes you go through a two second animation to teleport to them. The only issue I have with it is that this is typically how cheaters glitch outside the map. I guess you can't blame the devs because obviously it's not meant to be used like this. The shield is so cringe. You take 75% less damage, which means you go to 100 HP to 750 HP. I could be wrong about that, but whatever. It's just another mystical that people use in objective modes. Like, brother, it is not that serious. The spirit of Jin, Dijin, whatever. If you give this to someone who's mastered Dijin movement, it's literally unfair. Whenever you do that teleport animation, it makes you invisible and most importantly, invincible. Every other second, you have like half a second of god mode. Like, take away Amos is sure, but don't make it impossible to shoot the guy. The staff is the other mystical I don't have an issue with. It's pretty much you for the duration of a spy plane. It might be the only mystical that makes sense. The Wrath of El Dorado. Literally, f this mystical. It spawns specters that can go through walls, give people flinch, and do 20 damage per hit. Every time I see someone throw this on Victory Hill, it has me questioning. Is it that serious? Like, you're up 100 points and you're throwing El Dorados. Grow the f up. The Brute. It's a tank with a machine gun that has around 500 HP, I think. From far away, it's not that big of an issue. But up close, it f***ing melts you. And it gives you flinch. As if the flinch wasn't bad enough in U4, now you have to deal with this thing. The Hunters. Yeah. Um, this thing is pure cancer. It doesn't make sense to me. This is a multiplayer. Why are you here? Let me calm down. Okay. It tracks down where you are, so no matter what, you can't hide from it. It doesn't matter if you roll or jump, it will still grab you. And it puts you in a chokehold for about five seconds. And they gave it a weapon that fries you if you're too close to it. The second you get out the chokehold, it can immediately shoot you. What? I can't believe I'm saying that. A multiplayer with chokers. Imagine if it was U3. Like, it'd be unplayable. It blows my mind that some people say that this multiplayer is underrated. I'm getting off topic, but the Hunter is the goofiest thing I've ever seen in a multiplayer. The Savior is the only sidekick I don't have an issue with. I still think it's stupid, but if I had to choose one sidekick to stay, it'd probably be the Savior. It follows you around, gives you ammo, and reses you and your teammates when you get down. He's pretty easy to counter. He doesn't have that much health, and he does, like, zero damage to you. The Sniper sidekick is toxic. Truly one of the most annoying things in this multiplayer. They gave her an M14, and they didn't even nerf the damage. And let me tell Tell you she does not miss she 100 has aim by she also tracks people through walls so she also has wall hacks like you can literally spawn into a bullet it is unfair like i don't get why they added this leave this stuff in campaign u4 only has seven game modes so again this is going to be pretty quick i had to organize a custom lobby because more than half the game modes in this game are dead shout out to anyone who helped this segment would have been way more difficult without you first up is king of the hill a hill spawns on the map your team fights to cap that hill whichever team caps that hill has to survive a certain amount of time to get a certain amount of points or the opposing team can neutralize the hill by holding the objective if it wasn't for the try hard the mysticals and the sidekicks it definitely be more enjoyable and if you get a good lobby it's honestly pretty fun to play next up is bounty hunter and we have arrived at our first dead playlist surprising i know think of this as kill confirmed but in uncharted every kill a player drops a bounty if you claim that bounty it gives you a certain amount of points every so often there's a captain that has a bounty and that bounty goes up in value as the match goes on kind of ashamed it's dead because i used to play this a lot it forced people to move around the map so it made it fast paced but again it's ruined by all the mysticals and shit. team deathmatch this is where the casuals go outside of the stupid shit you can buy in the store hell no man what the this is the closest we're gonna get to an actual uncharted multiplayer to easily sum it up you win the match by getting 40 kills or i'm sorry ko's anyway i think this is a little too casual for my taste i find myself dying to people i know i'm better than because of all the new friendly mechanics and some matches play really slow because people love to camp on this game but if for whatever reason you want to play uncharted 4 your best bet is to play team deathmatch next up is command this is yet another dead playlist the best way i can describe it is think of it as domination from cod but in uncharted 4 the objectives a b and c are scattered around the map so it's almost like domination and bounty hunter at the same time and personally i didn't really like it that much the flow has no rhyme or rhythm to it i'm always getting shot behind me i'm always getting shot from my side it feels like anyone could be anywhere at any time maybe it's the map maybe it's the people i played against but personally it's just not it plunder oh would you look at that another dead playlist so it works like how it played in the previous uncharted multiplayers an idol spawns randomly in the middle of the map and your objective is to put the idol in your team's chest they actually implemented more movement mechanics you're able to jump with the idol you're able to climb with the idol but let me show you exactly why this game mode's dead yeah, no wonder no one plays this shit. Next up is Classic Mode. Hey guys, guess what? It's dead. I committed so hard to try to find a match because I really wanted to play Classic again. This is seriously the closest to an Uncharted multiplayer we have, but because it's dead, the only thing we have is Team Deathmatch. No mysticals, no sidekicks, no downs, no tryhards. You know, pretty much everything that ruined this multiplayer to begin with. And just like in Uncharted 2 and 3, heavy weapons spawn around the map. And finally, Ranked Mode. Okay, I don't think you guys are going to believe me when I say this, but guess what? It's dead. So I had to party up with 10 people and find each other. So I can't really give a fair assessment on rank considering I've never played it before. After three matches, it puts you into a rank. And guys, listen, I really tried to play three matches. But after the first one, we were in a call for like 30 minutes and we literally just could not find each other again. So I gave up on it. So I can't show exactly what happens. But I think rank works like how it would in any other multiplayer. So you're not missing out on much. But yeah, I think that's everything on the content side of things. I don't think there's anything else. Well, actually, I think I'm missing something.
Wait, no wait, boy. Yeah, I wasn't gonna talk about this, but I know that if I did an Uncharted 2 or 3 video, I would talk about that game's co-op, so it only feels fair to do it for this one. I'm not gonna go too much into it, but I do wanna talk about it for a little bit. So what is survival? What does it have to offer? It's honestly just a word dumbed down version of the co-ops we had before. The only reason why this even exists is because of the outcry the community had, and they had good reason to complain about it too, because the past two multiplayer had a co-op whenever it first released. But anyway, let's just go through the pros and cons first, right? So one thing they introduced was stages, which is a progression system. And yeah, I think it's really good. For each difficulty, there's a certain amount of rounds that you need to complete. And based on how fast you completed that round, it gives you a rating. And if you get the highest rating possible, you get rewards. It gives you an incentive to play, especially considering that this is going to take a while to do. A lot of these are not easy, especially if you do this solo. And there are more rewards, like getting a little graphic next to your name. Like, I guess that's cool. But I'll say this, U4 has been out for eight years and I have no plans on getting that star. Yet, if U3 came back out, getting the star is one of the first things I'm going to do. So let's look at the trailer and see what Naughty Dog did to hype up the community for the release of survival mode. First off, it said it was going to have over 100 plus wave types, which in all honesty is just a blatant lie. It still had survival, siege, and gold rush, except gold rush worked a little differently. Instead of the old way, you know how you picked up the idol and had to take it to the chest, they changed it to just running around the map and picking up bounties. Pretty boring if you ask me, but whatever. And there's other wave types like multi marked man, the hunter horde, there's some bonus rounds in there, and they implemented wave conditions. The wave conditions are pretty lazy, it just consists of things like headshots only or melee only. I don't get why they added this. Co-op was perfectly fine without these conditions, but I guess they felt the need to add them anyway. And it's possible to get multiple conditions in one wave. So yeah, I guess technically there's a hundred plus wave types, but you can see how the wording of that made a lot of people disappointed. But there are some that benefit you, like increased headshot damage or increased explosive damage. And these are absolutely fine because instead of forcing you to play a certain way, it gives you the choice if you want to use grenades or want to go for headshots. But some of the wave conditions are unfinished and senseless. Come to find out that there's weapons you can't get headshots with. Why? I don't fucking know, you just can't. I get that that isn't that big of a problem because you can just switch to a weapon that can get headshots. But my point is, is that this is something that shouldn't have been overlooked and it's a sign that this was clearly rushed. And there's a wave that's pistols only, which in hindsight isn't that big of an issue. But if you're on the final wave and it's on one of the harder difficulties for the average player, unless you have a crevasse, it's gonna be pretty difficult and near impossible. And there's another condition that allows enemies to get revived. If you get this in the first couple waves, it's not that big of an issue. But in the later waves, especially if it's siege, it is so dumb, it's not even fun to play. And we have to talk about Mirror World. This is easily the worst thing in the fucking game. On paper, it sounds cool. It just flips your cam POV side to side. And now you play in a flipped version of that map. However, I don't know what it is. It might be something in the code, but it's so glitchy and clearly unfinished. The collision is bugged. The aim assist is bugged. Literally, your entire character is just bugged. Clearly, no love went into this wave condition, and it's just such a turn off every time I get it. And on top of that, it's just so ugly having your character on the right side of the screen just doesn't look right this isn't even a challenge anymore it's just an inconvenience i know it might look cool but trust me it's weird it's one of those things that you have to play to get what i'm talking about but they did add something that the uncharted community was asking for years and that's being able to play solo one of the biggest critiques about uncharted 2 and 3's co-op is that you're not able to play by yourself you either have to play with a split screen or someone online so you can imagine that so many people were hype about this and yeah i think it's pretty cool but there are definitely a couple problems first off they force you to play with an npc which i think is completely fine i don't have a problem with that however there are still issues with it. Take this clip for example. I was gray screen, I was about to die, and then I tried getting in cover, and then Chloe tried to nut hug me or something, and I couldn't get in cover. And if the wave condition is headshots only, the NPC is useless. It literally can't get headshots. There's matches where the NPC literally just gets stuck and they can't move for the rest of the match. And also, playing solo is a little too difficult. I don't mean to sound arrogant, but I know I'm a good player. I've been playing Uncharted for over a decade now. I know pretty much everything about it. Yet I have to say that this is like really difficult. And plus, there are rounds that are literally impossible to beat as a solo player. Like if you get kill eight multi marked man and you have a time limit and it's on siege you might as well give up that's literally impossible but other than that i think solo mode is completely fine except getting kicked for inactivity you heard me right you can get kicked out for inactivity in a solo mode like it doesn't even make sense why is that even a thing the whole point of getting kicked for inactivity is so the player doesn't lose or gain anything while they're afk and if you go afk you neither gain or lose anything why even kick me in the first place it's just redundant and it's not even like being inactive for like 20 or 30 minutes it's like less than five minutes or something there was this one time where I was AFK for about four minutes. Then I came back and you know, I started moving. And then I get kicked for inactivity. I got kicked for being inactive, even though I was clearly active. If you're gonna add something that's f***ing stupid, can you make it make sense? So if you're an hour into your co-op run and you have to do something real quick, too bad, cause you're gonna get kicked. And there's not even a pause button. The game still continues even if you press pause. I'm perplexed at how something like this can go under the radar unnoticed. And also, why can't I choose what map I wanna play? Considering that you're probably either gonna be playing by yourself or with your friends. It makes no sense as to why I can't choose the map. 
And on top of that, if you get a map that you don't want to play, you have to wait a couple minutes for the game to load. Then you can back out. You get a bad map, wait two minutes, back out the map. Get another bad map, wait two minutes, back out again. Get another bad map, wait two minutes, back out again. You get my point. But anyway, let's talk about the progression system and how to rank things up. So your level on co-op doesn't even interfere with your multiplayer level. It was such a good system that Uncharted 2 and 3 had, but they just took it away for practically no reason at all. It was literally the incentive to play. And don't even get me started on the weapon level progression. The progression for the weapons is just so lazy and uninspiring. At the end of the arena, it drops a random weapon and gives it one upgrade. And yep, that's about it. Like that's so lazy and half-assed. Can you not think of a better way to upgrade weapons? Like you just spent over an hour of your time to get an upgrade on a weapon that you're probably never going to use. Like congratulations, you upgraded a copperhead to level three. Like who gives a f There are millions of ways to approach this, yet you took the worst way possible. Like, hey, you know those arsenals that you put around the map? Have it to where I can purchase upgrades through the arsenal and choose whatever weapon I want to play with. And let's just get this argument out the way. 30 FPS. So everything you've seen so far has been converted to 60 FPS. So I have mixed opinions. On one side, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, look at the campaign. That's in 30 FPS and it's not that big of a problem there. But the thing is, the campaign is filled with cinematics and exploration and scenery. But in survival, you have to be very accurate and precise, especially in the higher difficulties. And with 30 FPS comes input lag with the implementation of flinch and all these animations the input lag is such a struggle to deal with one of the only things going for you for is the fluidity of the gameplay and 60 fps helps that out immensely so to take that away is just even worse so obviously it being 30 fps is a really bad thing but it's definitely not the worst thing ever you know overall survival is just okay there's definitely some incentive to play it, but it doesn't have the grindiness that you two had and doesn't have the replayability that call of adventure had but overall at least you tried you know Mechanically, Uncharted 4 multiplayer is a mess. A lot of it doesn't make sense. I'm pretty sure a five-year-old can do a better job designing a multiplayer. But with that being said, there are a handful of things that U4 did right. And I decided to dedicate a segment about the good of U4. Okay, now that that's done, let's talk about the... Now, let me stop. There's actually a couple things good about U4. All right, so let's address the elephant in the room. Going from the Uncharted 3 engine to this graphically might be the biggest upgrade in multiplayer history. Uncharted 4 probably has one of the best engines, at least a top five. Everything is smooth and polished and the attention to detail. Like, oh my God, it's so good. And I've come to realize that a lot of the maps have weather effects. Yeah, I just sat there and realized that the weather changes. I know it's not the biggest dynamic change, but it's a variable that not most games have. And even if they do, it's usually not good. But in U4, aside from Trainwreck, it's executed almost perfectly. Visual I think U4 is better in every aspect in comparison to its predecessors. Well, everything except the UI is kind of just plain and dull. There's nothing really special about it. In Uncharted 2 and definitely 3, there's something about the boosters and the kickbacks that's truly visually appealing. It almost has this Bioshock aesthetic to it. Bioshock just happens to be one of my favorite franchises of all time. Seeing something that resembles it in one of my favorite multiplayers is just amazing. And seeing your character whenever you're in the menu or finding a match. Nearly every multiplayer does this because it makes it feel more dynamic or animated. That's probably a better word. U4 just has a... Uh, a mountain. Don't get me wrong, it's beautiful. I know it has a lot of lore behind it, but when you see it a million times, it kind of grows on you. But anyway, out of all the Uncharted's, U4 definitely has the best gameplay. Gameplay meaning how the gun feels and visuals. And even when I'm gray screen, which is something that I've always hated, I feel like it's not that big of an issue. And I feel like out of any multiplayer I've ever played, on U4, I'm the most aware. The camera FOV or field of view plays a huge part in the visibility because you can see a lot of your surroundings. In the other multiplayers, the camera FOV was really narrow. For reference, if U4 had the same FOV as factions, it probably looks something like this. There's a clear difference here, and hopefully by now you get what I'm saying. The gunplay in this game is also unbelievably good. The hit markers, the gun sound effects, the way the gun feels, it's near perfection if I'm being honest. So obviously audio is very important in these type of games, and to this day, I don't think I've ever complained about audio in U4. They did a phenomenal job with the audio. Even if you make a peek, it gives away your location. I know exactly where you're at. And even the little audio cues, you know, when you're jumping or you're on a rope or you're climbing, it's so easy to hear those cues. But enough of me glazing the engine. I want to talk about the movement. So I feel like the movement is pretty underutilized, and that's kind of disappointing. The biggest thing I want to talk about are the hooks or the ropes. I've heard people say that they don't like the ropes and I honestly don't see how. It's undoubtedly the best mechanic that U4 has to offer. Outside of the Superman punch that's a one shot one kill, which by the way is so dumb. I think it's a unique mechanic that's innovative and has a lot to offer. The maps that utilize the ropes well are the ones I had the most fun on easily. And with boosters like Rope Master and Weapon Expert which allow you to use your weapon on and off the rope, god man the potential is insane. And another complaint that I've heard is that there's no run animation and honestly I don't see an issue with it. It wasn't a big issue in U2 and it also isn't that big of an issue here. The animation they gave us is like this light sprint or it's more like a jog. I mean, it definitely would have benefited having a sprint animation, but not having one, I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing. And there's small things like ammo pickups. For every KO, it drops a clip of ammo, which is very convenient. And also the reloading mechanics are really good. I never realized how crucial reloading and rolling at the same time is until I played Rogue Company. In that game, you can't do that. And it's such a prison. Uh, proximity chat is also pretty cool. Being able to talk while playing can lead to some very funny moments. Uh -huh. 
Bro. Hey, you Cooper, you a f***ing cheater. Who is cheater? You cheated, not sniping, you bitch. Not you, Billy. Who is not good enough? Yeah, Billy, Billy, you ain't good enough to be cheating, Billy. Me? Oh, no, man. I'm, a, I am I'm really... the one smoked you out the objective, Billy. Bro, Remember that. What? <laughs> 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 Listen, what? listen, your grandfather was kid, you know that? Don't uh, forget, bro. <laughs> your grandfather <laughs> was the kid in Africa. And, and guess what your grandfather was? Ask your mother. <laughs> <laughs> the in-game banter is kind of cool, I guess. You know, whenever you get a kill and your character says something quirky, some of them are kind of out of pocket, though. Yeah, okay, it was close, but don't get your knickers in a twist. <laughs> and the last thing I have written down are leaderboards. For the stats literally show everything. It is so specific. I think the only thing it doesn't show are headshots. But there's one thing that I'm pretty sure we can unanimously agree is top tier. Cosmetics. Whoever the person or the people who cooked with these cosmetics need a round of applause. Out of any Naughty Dog game, it's undoubtedly the best. Bro, the taunts? Why are they this f***ing good? Bro, if they put this much effort into the multiplayer it may have been good the free 200 uncharted points that you got let's be honest all of us spent it on a ton and you're able to pick a skin with two accessories like bro it's so good the only negative i have are the preset colors i wish they went the u3 route and let you choose whatever color you want to wear but everything else s tier it's unbelievably good but even though the cosmetics are very impressive everything else that monetizes u4 is not and honestly a lot of the content is subpar the whole multiplayer store and certain things being locked behind a paywall is I mean, I guess you can't really blame them because this game came out in 2016. It was a monetization strategy that almost every single game was using around this time. A pair of f***ing It was pretty much gambling and no one liked it. There's no way around it. U4 implemented it and it is horrible. I'll say that the majority of it is on the cosmetic side of things. And if it was exclusively cosmetics, even with the thousands of shitty color palettes, I wouldn't even be talking about it. That's not really an issue. However, the issue comes whenever you lock certain features, specifically meta features behind all this soft gambling, and it kind of makes your game feel like it's pay to win. Okay, I will say that U4 isn't 100% pay to win there are definitely other games clash real that are far times more pay to win than u4 but regardless there's still weapons that you have to pay for i've heard people defend u4 by saying half the weapons are given to you for free and the things that do cost money don't cost that much so it's not even pay to win uh okay it's still pay to win if you spend money the game's easier that's what pay to win means yes i understand that the metler the foul the hs like these are all given to you for free but the point i'm trying to make is outside of cosmetics nothing should cost you money and yeah there's things that are meta that are given to you for free but there's things that do cost money that are also meta the provost argue all Micro, Enforcer, The Low, The DC, The Shield of Asgard, Harden, Weapon Expert, Silent Assassin, Gunslinger, and also like half the co-op boosters. You have to buy all these or spend 2,500 relic and hope you get it in a chest. And 2,500 is a lot of fucking relic. Unless you have the VIP thing, which by the way, you have to spend money for. Even if you play every single day, that's probably going to take you like a little over a week. For the average person, that's a lot of Uncharted. Too much Uncharted, if I'm being honest. <laughs> They said they increased the rate of getting color palettes. If you look at the stats right above me, um, that's obviously bullshit. I don't fucking understand. Like, make that 300 price relic worth it. Like, give me fucking six items, not four. They want you to fucking buy Uncharted coins because Night Dog needs money. If you go right here and look at the goddamn list, you can clearly just see that I haven't gotten any of this shit so far. It's a whole cluster so far this way of transactions has aged terribly and i think there's games that have banned it completely i mean the past multiplayers also had this issue to where you had to spend money to get certain weapons but it usually only costs a dollar or even 50 cents i still don't think it should have cost money anyway but at least you didn't have to deal with this in-game currency bullshit I'm so glad it's dead. It's one of the scummiest ways to monetize your multiplayer. I'm surprised I don't see people talk about it that much. It might be because there's so much wrong with U4 that it kind of just blends in. And I think the multiplayer store ties in with the progression, which is also just not good. And that's because there really isn't one. First of all, the most important thing is leveling up in the rank system. Let me start off by saying that it didn't even have this when it first released. I guess they wanted to be different and separate themselves from other multiplayers. This was just stupid, hence why it's in the game now. People like to show their level. They want to showcase to other players that they're experienced. But even though they implemented a rank system, you still can't do that in fine game you can't see other people's levels it literally defeats the purpose of having a rank system kind of makes your game feel soulless whenever you find a lobby and no one has a rank and even if that wasn't the case leveling up just feels terrible to say the least the amount of xp you need is disgusting i want to say it's around 12 million xp which doesn't sound too bad but when you consider that you're going to average around 3,000 xp per match you got to play over 4,000 matches just to get max level for reference i'm still not max level and i put a decent amount of time into u4 and you get some rewards for leveling up which is cool sure it's pretty useless and underwhelming but it's something 
then I guess it's sad that leveling up is pretty underwhelming. It's crazy because in U2, that's all people cared about. But now it's just there. Like it wouldn't even matter if it wasn't. Like what happened to Legacy? This would have been perfect in U4. And it's not even just that. There's practically nothing to grind on U4. The missions, the legacies, the boosters. It doesn't have any of that. Well, it has the boosters, but a lot of it is so monotonous and so dull, especially considering that half the boosters are very niche and are pretty useless. And you have to buy a lot of them. So there's that too. And since the progression was so dry, the only things players would look forward to was content. And guess what? It was even more stale. Shocker, I know. And people were so bored and didn't know what to do because the content was so slow. I'm talking within the span of a year, there were only like three or four major updates. And if I'm being honest, some of those content drops didn't really have much to offer. And even whenever it did release, half of it was blocked by a paywall. Let me start off by saying that U4 had a whopping total of three game modes, four if you count ranks. That means that the Uncharted 3 beta had more game modes than the release of Uncharted 4. Embarrassing. There's no wonder everyone left because there was literally nothing to do. And on top of there being barely anything to play, it only released with eight maps. This is yet again another downgrade because U3 released with 11. And even whenever there was a new map, you'd barely play it because there's no map voting. Why did you get rid of this? Every multiplayer had it up to this point. Playing the same map three times in a row is something people don't want to do. How is it that a game that's 13 years old has more content than you? For reference, this is how many maps U4 has right now. And this is how many maps U3 had back in 2019. A lot of it was lab maps, but still it's embarrassing. I mean, Naughty Dog is pretty notorious for slow content drops it's nothing new it just happens to be the worst in u4 it's almost as if they didn't even play the past two multiplayers because u4 is too different and i'm not even talking about content mechanically u4 is a completely different game a huge reason why the mechanics in this game are very lackluster is because of how much it tried to copy factions if you're familiar with both the multiplayers it doesn't take a side-by-side -side comparison to know that they're very similar if you didn't know the same people who made factions multiplayer are the same people who made uncharted 4 multiplayer it's so blatantly obvious that they took a lot of attributes and then copy and pasted it to u4 the lp system the down system the in-game store both games are clearly team oriented just based on how the spawns work it's one thing to copy u2 and u3 more than likely it would have been mostly okay because they're all in the same universe it's all uncharted but you stole from a different ip it's a completely different game it's like trying to mix water with oil it just doesn't work and because a lot of the mechanics don't harmonize with each other it results in this game having all these features and mechanics that make no sense and even if you try to ignore all of it it's how the game functions so it's impossible it was such a spit in the face to uncharted fans because we didn't want this we didn't want this play as a team new friendly bullshit. i find it so disrespectful to quite literally strip the personality of a great game that you didn't even make and then you plaster it with a completely different game and then say eh good enough it doesn't even feel like uncharted it's a completely different game that's disguised as uncharted i think even rogue company mechanically resembles uncharted more than u4 maybe not today but when they came out most definitely that's very concerning that shouldn't be a thing going back to u4 it's so obvious that a lot of the mechanics weren't completely thought out it's so hard to pinpoint the pace of this multiplayer there are some matches that are so chaotic in a bad way that it feels like i'm playing a third person overwatch and then other matches where it's so slow and boring that I'm falling asleep while I'm holding my controller. So obviously this game has a lot of noob friendly mechanics. And realistically, it should primarily be noobs that utilize these features. But that's not the case. Those same mechanics that should only be helping out bad players are literally meta. It simultaneously assists noobs and it's something that good players use to gain an advantage. This same exact issue is why games like Overwatch was successful back in 2016. Obviously Overwatch doesn't have the best balancing, but at least the majority of it made sense. There were and still are noob friendly mechanics in Overwatch, but those mechanics for the most part only benefited bad players. Sure, good players can use those mechanics or in this case heroes but they're better off using whatever's meta or the heroes that had bigger skill gaps and no matter how you play there are features that are locked because it's categorized in u4 it's the complete opposite anyone can use anything at any time and good players gain this unnecessary advantage that should only be benefiting bad players nothing has any rhyme or rhythm to it and it's so obvious that no thought went into these mechanics yeah that's what happens whenever you copy mechanics from the wrong multiplayer it's sad because outside of the sidekicks and the interest these features could have worked in u4 it's the economy it's the in-game store it's the down system that ruined everything the down system is something else that i just don't understand i mean i get why it's there it's just another thing they copied from factions but it's another one of those things that uncharted didn't need it's such an extreme change it would easily change the flow of any multiplayer i talked about it before and i said i didn't have an issue with the down system but i had an issue with the features surrounding the down system you know the saviors the rest backs the chintamani stones i said i had an issue with how easy it is to revive people but not the actual down system itself i was wrong about that my opinion has changed severely it's dumb it's worthless it's one of those things that no one wanted but they went through with it anyway it really goes to show how naive a lot of these devs were the only excuse i could think of for them going through with these drastic changes is if they didn't play two or three not only is the down system unnecessary but the mechanics surrounding it is just stupid specifically the res packs it's this this one mechanic it completely throws the balance off at least reviving had some balance to it it wasn't the best but it was still kind of there if you go against a team and they're all using res packs it's i i can't even think of a word annoying aggravating exasperating any adjectives that would describe how annoying it is will do to down someone then they get res to full hp in less 
minutes to three seconds. That doesn't even make sense on paper. Did you test this? Just finish your kills, bro. It's so easy. Why are you complaining? How about you get some bitches if it's that easy? You're not going to be able to get your full every time. They can be too far away or they can be in a spot to where if you go for the full, you're just going to get yourself killed. It's sometimes impractical and more than often impossible to get the full kill, which is why it shouldn't be in the game in the first place. The thing is, downs maybe could have worked in U4. It obviously makes sense in The Last of Us. It's more of a passive stick together, plays a team type game. It works in Rogue Company as well. Now we can all agree that Rogue has a lot of issues with it, but the downs aren't one of them. It just makes sense. I feel like it'd be kind of weird without it. It doesn't bother me because the downs are in sync with the gameplay, but I can't say the same for U4. Even if it was balanced, I wouldn't like it because the game would be better without it. It doesn't work. It completely throws away what Uncharted was once known for. It's the same reason why no one likes Final Stand in any of the COD games. It hinders the flow. It's more of a barrier than anything. It's the same thing with U4. It was completely unnecessary and just feels like another mechanic that was implemented for bad players. And it's one thing to have a down system, but to have so many mechanics that assist down players is beyond noob friendly. Being able to mark people while you're down is already ridiculous. But what if I told you that you can kill people while you're down? Why? Because this game is f***ing stupid, that's why. You lost the engagement, why are you still able to kill me? And it's not just this, the entire multiplayer story is not good. I feel like this feature wasn't necessary and there's so many issues with it. First off, the economy in this game, for the lack of a better term, is f***. It's so easy to get money in this game, you don't even have to try. You get money from downing people, KOing people, marking people, revives, assists, disarms, playing the objective, not playing the objective. What? You get money from using mysticals, sidekicks, gear, you can get money from dying. Like, what? And on top of all that, there's a passive income. It's like every nine or 10 seconds, you get $15. I don't get why it's so easy to get a lot of money. It's almost like they're catering to the news. Yeah, never saw that coming. So with how the store works, some people try to justify it by saying it's similar to metal kickbacks on U3. To be fair, to a certain extent, they're right. Both of them are definitely new friendly. There's no doubt about that. Is it my talking? Shut the f up. And why is my ass on fire? What the f is going on there, Ty Team? Boom, shakalaka, baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my God, what the f but there's no doubt that U3 handled it way better. First of all, if you die with the kickback, you don't respawn with it. Specifically the power weapons. If you use your kickback, it resets your metals. So you kind of have this high risk, high reward thing going on with it. And whenever you activated your kickback, you had to initiate. Otherwise, it would have potentially been a waste. Now let's fast forward to U4. First off, it doesn't matter how many times you die. You'll always respawn with whatever you purchase until you use it. And you're able to buy multiple at a time. 99% of things you purchase, there's like no risk to it whatsoever. Bro, there's no balance to anything. It's as noob friendly as it can get. And because you can buy multiple things at once, it ends in matches like this. It's laughable that this is supposed to be seen as innovation. It's just stupid. It's the opposite of fun. I just can't stress enough how fear eating this is to someone who's never dealt with it before. It's easily one of the most annoying things in U4. Maybe if there was a counter to it, it'd be better, but of course there isn't. It's Naughty Dog. Some people are going to say that, oh, well, everyone has access to it, so it's perfectly fine. I don't understand that mentality. If you counter stupid sh with that exact same stupid sh no one gains anything. But hey, there's 10 injuries on the ground. It's one thing if it's an OP weapon, but this is an entire feature. It doesn't matter if everyone has access to it. It's still senseless. Just a mystical category alone had people turn their backs on this multiplayer but there's also sidekicks i'm sorry what who on god's green earth who in their right fucking mind edited this to the game i seriously can't think of another multiplayer that has this type of stuff my main question is why do they feel as if uncharted needed this not better balancing not mechanics that require skill that reward good players but imbecilic nonsensical ai that would add no benefit to the multiplayer whatsoever and would potentially be the stupidest fucking thing we could add to the game yeah check that one off that's the one like no one wanted this shit. what's the point of adding it did you ask for this i didn't ask for this it's borderline disrespectful towards the uncharted community there's not a single person who wanted this it's almost like they got a randomizer and whatever popped up they put into the multiplayer i wish i could think of an excuse for them adding this the only people who like this are noobs and actually that might be the reason noobs uncharted 4 is easily the most noob friendly game i've ever played in my life nearly every game i play i have at least one death as a result of something being noob friendly it doesn't matter if you're the best player in u4 you will inevitably encounter something that is just unfair and you know what if you want to add some noob friendly mechanics sure go ahead nearly every multiplayer does anyway however the problem comes whenever you punish good players like streaking for example Whenever you get a lot of kills without dying, it's something that literally every single multiplayer rewards you for. However, in U4, not only do you not get anything, you're actually punished. If someone's on a streak and you kill them, you get bonus cash for it. I'm sorry, did I miss something? Something that 99% of games reward you for. It's the same thing you get punished for in U4. If this isn't a sign that the devs are out of touch, I don't know what is. And yeah, like I said earlier, U4 is clearly team oriented. And yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's a 5v5 multiplayer. You profit from playing as a team. But the thing is, it not only benefits you, but it's how the game was designed. So if you don't play as a team, then you're punished. 
for it. This is an issue for numerous reasons. Not only is it just stupid because it, you know, appeals to noobs, but the whole thing is backwards. It's not what Uncharted is known for in U3 and especially U2. Run and Gun was practically its entire identity. It's how a lot of people played the game. So you can imagine that so many people were mad about this change because they spent years acquiring this skill just for it to be practically useless in U4. There's three game modes in Uncharted 4 multiplayer. Three game modes, right? We have Team Deathmatch, we have Command, and we have Plunder. They're both team-based game modes, you know? And it, all I've been saying for so long is that why don't you come out with a mode that also suits other players? Why don't you add an actual solo mode? Why don't you add a classic mode for the people that don't want that sort of stuff? Add Elimination or anything else, something different. Some people just like being solo that don't play in the team. And if you don't play in the team in this game, you're completely screwed because your other team is going to be constantly reviving each other and there's no way you're even winning. It doesn't make sense to me why they would gut a playstyle that takes skill just to replace it with something that was clearly made for bad players. It's a barrier and they can't do anything about it. It used to be about controlling and holding spawns and it was so simple to learn. But this is quite literally impossible to do in U4. I've put a decent amount of time in the U4 and I can confidently say that I still don't know how the spawns work or I know how it works but I just can't get the hang of it. The respawn times aren't fixed. It varies from one second all the way to 14 seconds. That alone makes it difficult to push spawns but it gets better. Everyone spawns at the same time. It holds your hand and spawns you in with your teammates just to make it a lot easier for you. Like ugh just stop let me play how I want to play. So even if you successfully push a spawn you're gonna have to deal with five people at once and that's impossible. And with the spawns working like this it causes stupid sh like this to happen. Yeah, great design, guys. Keep up the good work. And even if the spawns didn't work like this, it still wouldn't be that practical. Because of downs, it takes longer to kill people and it throws off your momentum. And also, the maps in this game are not good. What the f is this piece of shit? A handful of them weren't designed for rotating, so it makes it feel so slow. There's all these walls and buildings that blocks lines of sight. And even if it has an entrance, half the time it's these tight ass corridors. You're exposed when you're going through these, and half the time there's someone waiting for you. But the thing is, U2 and U3 had these tight corridors, some of them being on the best maps in the game. So why does it work here, but not in U4? It typically leads to rooms or hallways where gunfights aren't common. There's little to no risk taking these paths because you're more than likely not going to get shot at. And even if it leads to a more open area, there's always several ways to get to that area. And normally there's immediate cover so you can re-engage in gunfights. But the way U4 designed these corridors are terrible. It's always a risk running through these doors because it leads to actual focal points. And typically when there's multiple paths, it's just more tight corridors. It leads to people camping and ratting in these areas. And unless your team has good coordination, you can't do anything about it. But you honestly can't blame people for camping. The way the maps were designed caters to camping and it's so easy. Uncharted's all about height, verticality, and tall ledges. So why add death barriers and invisible walls to these platforms? Was it because you think it'd be cheesy and people would take advantage? Of it. If that was the case, then why does a mystical category exist? And also, I'm sure that a lot of you guys remember corner shooting. Strafing behind a corner, it was one of the best, if not the best, strat in the game. So these corners were pivotal and played a huge part in the gameplay. But in U4, it's just not practical. I get why they nerfed it, but like, damn, bro, it's like almost impossible. And the net code and the lag compensation make it even worse. I'm talking about that thing where you're clearly behind a wall, but you're still getting shot at. To be fair, all the Uncharted's had this issue because none of them had dedicated servers. I mean, don't get it twisted. Playing corners is still very important. Hugging your camera around the wall is very useful. But these corridors just don't work in U4. And I bring this up because map design plays a huge part in how the spawns work. It doesn't matter how good the spawns are, the map sucks. And with this map design, certain play styles just weren't viable anymore. There's a certain bone I want to pick, and it's kind of personal. I mean, if it wasn't for this thing, then this video probably wouldn't exist because it's what really got me into Uncharted. Some of the most fun I've had in my gaming career was clip hunting on U3, but in U4, it's so bad. The only clan that was consistently making U4 content was the Defiant. And since they were the only clan pumping out a lot of U4 content, there was no competition, and everything felt so dry. No disrespect towards the editors. Stingy, Hot, Trust, Rubix. You guys all did amazing jobs. It's not your fault. But I don't even feel like I've touched base on why clip hunting was so bad. First of all, the cinema. Uncharted 3's cinema was quite literally perfect. The slow motion, the kill feed, the visual effects. You can change the depth of field, the field of view, the tint, the sun intensity, the ambience. You could add fog. You could twist the camera. You could edit clips. Like, it felt like I could do anything. This was all on U3. So on U4, the possibilities are endless. Right? All right, let's see. You can pause. Oh, you can... You can fast forward. You can slow motion. What the f is that? The word downgrade isn't good enough to explain how dog shit it is. Even the Uncharted 2 cinema was better. How? How does a game that is 15 years old have a better theater mode than you? How do you f that up? You have two games to go off of, yet you get it completely wrong. And not to mention, this game didn't even release with a theater mode. They had to add it because people were non-stop complaining about it. And even though it barely has any features, it's still just terrible. The amount of lag that these cinemas have are unbearable. How did this get passed? Like, genuine question. How did no one notice this? Yeah, good luck editing with this. I'm sure that's possible. Just 
just save the clip through share factory bro it's not that big of a deal you obviously know nothing about montage editing if you think that editing this 30 fps pixelated garbage is practical in 2009 it was possible but this is 2016 not even rubik's can make it look that good and you probably don't even know who that is and also this game doesn't have a kill feed why did they forget about it did they think that the game didn't need one uncharted 2 and 3 has one rogue company has one call of duty has one halo has one outside of factions uncharted 4 is the only multiplayer shooter i know that doesn't have a kill feed and people are going to try to say that this on the bottom right is a kill feed yeah i'm not buying it that's an event feed at best i'm talking about whenever you kill someone or in this case when you down someone it shows who you down and what you down them with it just didn't add it i don't get why but i want to bring up an even bigger topic jump snipes if you don't know what a jump snipe is it's pretty much the equivalent to a trick shot on cod but in uncharted it's pretty much what sold me and 90% of clip hunters to start clip hunting in the first place What made it so special was how random it was You never knew when you were gonna hit and that's what made it so good So why do I bring this up? It's still possible to jump snipe on U4 It's not like they took it away A lot of the maps on U4 aren't open A lot of them have these big ass walls and buildings that block your lines of sight U3 maps were quite literally the opposite It was very open, you could see practically everything And that itself already makes jump sniping worse Also, U4 doesn't have a sniper that can blind fire one shot you Blind fire headshots aren't possible So you have to tag the person to go for it and that can be be an issue you tag them you cock back your sniper and they hide behind a wall but even if i do get a successful attempt it's just so underwhelming see they added third person crosshairs in u4 which means no matter where you shoot your bullet will always go in that area it gets rid of that randomness it makes jump sniping so underwhelming in uncharted 3 your entire screen was your crosshair it doesn't matter if you look up down your bullet's gonna go wherever it wants to and again that's what clip hunters like they like that randomness and actually i conducted an experiment to prove my point all right let's put it right here so to prove my point i'm gonna go for hop snipes until one of these bullets can Dude, oh my god. Even the tank got impatient, man. What the fuck? All right, so let's put it right here. So now we're on U4. So let me get about the same distance. Yeah, like right about here. So yeah, let's begin. So I put the propane tank a little further, you know, just to make it a little fair. So yeah, here we go. Are you fucking kidding? The excitement of hitting a jump snipe was completely stripped away and that's honestly disappointing. And overall, clip hunting on U4 is just not fun. I mean, don't get it wrong, it's very possible to get clips in U4, but you have to be at the right place at the right time and you can't mess up and the odds are against you. Call it a skill issue, but I can speak on behalf of every clip hunter that we don't care. Regardless of what you think it is, on U4 it still sucks. And I guarantee you, the same people who say it's a skill issue don't even know what a TG is. And it wasn't just clip hunting that was ruined, it was practically every playstyle. And that's why people hate this game. If you try to play a certain way, then you're punished for it. You have no freedom. And overall, mechanically, Uncharted 4 multiplayer is a catastrophic mess. If I could describe the state of U4 in one word, I'd probably say infested. Clearly U4 is in a terrible condition and a lot of people who still play it aren't making it any better. One of the many reasons why U4 is in the state that it's in right now is because of the toxicity. Running into toxic players is pretty much inevitable. And because there's not that many people who still play U4, you'll constantly run into these same people. And if it was just people playing in a cheesy way, using scummy loadouts, it wouldn't even be that big of an issue. I mean, if that was the case, then literally every multiplayer would be terrible. And the thing is, there's people who go out of their way just to harass you. They take the time out of their day just to make your experience worse. In my other video, when I said that U4 is filled with gremlins who play this game 24-7, I meant that. These people don't have any shame or remorse. They act like this because it's truly who they are. And I always stumble across these same people, which is why I don't play this game as often anymore. And it might be because, you know, I make content. I'm well known in the NPC. Whenever I talk about U4, it's usually negative. I'm an easy target. But regardless of what it is, these people still exist. And one way they express their toxicity is by cheating. An issue I was inevitably going to talk about is the amount of cheaters that are in Uncharted 4. There's so many of them that at this point there's more cheaters than there are legitimate players. It's an unstoppable force. An unstoppable force that you have to deal with if you play Uncharted 4. Oh, you don't believe me.
that guy is fing cheating. He's cheating! So this is about 8 hours worth footage, which is 480 minutes. I found around 79 cheaters, but I know it's more than that because there's some that I miss and there's others that I deleted by mistake. So we're just going to round it up to 85, which still, I know it's more than that. So if we take the total time and divide it by the amount of cheaters I found, on average, you'll find someone cheating every 5.5 minutes. That is repulsive. Some people need to rethink their lives. Now I will say, though it's very rare, it is possible to find a lobby where everyone's legit, but the next lobby you find, someone's going to cheat, so it doesn't even matter. I've heard people defend this by saying, because cheating is so prevalent, it's not that big of a deal and at this point it's just an in-game mechanic it really goes to show the type of people who still play you for they think that meleeing a wall then dashing like you just pulled a star in mario kart is an in-game mechanic there's no possible way you believe that right there's no way you're trying to justify one of the biggest problems with you for i'd only justify speed glitching specifically if someone on the other team was doing it personally i still wouldn't do it because you don't have morals and that's the thing people's morality has been diminishing for the past eight years this multiplayer has been rotting for a long time and a lot of people who still play it just don't care anymore it's one thing to fight fire with fire or someone else is cheating but if you're one of these people who still cheat when you're in a more casual lobby and there's clearly no one else cheating just look in the mirror or something there's clearly something wrong with you i don't get why you feel the need to ruin everything you four is clearly on its last legs but you proceed to get on every day just to cheat i just don't get the appeal do you not have anything better to do and i'm talking to anyone that cheats in any type of way you're so shameless and you have no remorse or consideration for anyone but yourself you're one of the main issues with you four but you're probably the same people who cry that it's unsupported and the cheaters is one of the many reasons why no one wants to play you four anymore on top of there being so many of them people don't want to play the mp because it just sucks no matter how you look at it objectively u4 is not a good game the whole point of a multiplayer is to have fun and to get better as a player but not only is it rare to have fun on u4 if you're playing by yourself but what's the point of getting good if there's numerous mechanics that punish and prevent you from achieving that and then there's a topic of a skill issue the amount of comments i've seen that say i have a skill issue is honestly concerning obviously the only people who are saying this are hardcore u4 fans the only reason they say this is because they're incapable of articulating an actual response to legitimate criticism it doesn't matter what it is even if you say something slightly negative they'll say you have a skill issue it blows my mind for the past eight years they've been trying to defend their favorite game but every time they're hit with reasonable coherent criticism that proves their point wrong their rebuttal always ends up with you not being a good player i know this because 95 percent of my comments that try to defend you for they try to disprove my opinion by saying i have a skill issue and honestly you just look like a fucking moron if you truly believe that the only reason why people hate this game is because they have a skill issue you're an idiot that's simply a wrong opinion there are some people in the comp community that i'm actually cool with and it's simply because they're self-aware they play because they feel as if U4 is all they have left. They know that sooner or later, just like Uncharted 2 and 3, U4 is going to get shut down. But on the other hand, you play the game because you brainwash yourself into thinking that U4 is genuinely a good game. It's like that one TikTok meme where they don't want to admit they're wrong. I'm not willing to admit that I was wrong, so I'm going to pretend that I love it and that this was the plan. Take it from me, I hate to show my arrogance and my ego here, but I know I'm a very good player. There are still dozens of players that are better than me. I'm not claiming to be the best, but at the very least in terms of skill i know i'm above average and as much as i hate to admit it i've invested a lot of time into this multiplayer <laughs> Now, given I think half of that is AFK time because I looked at my player stats and it showed that I had around 750 hours of in-game playtime. But regardless, I still spent a lot of time on U4. And whether or not you think I'm good or garbage, mechanically I know everything about U4. And I'm telling you right now, no, this multiplayer fing sucks. And over 90% of people watching this would agree with that. It's easy to tell someone they have a skill issue if they don't even have over 50 hours played and barely gave this multiplayer a chance back in 2016. But saying I have a skill issue, someone who's invested over a thousand hours into this game because I'm a fing loser, you look like a pinhead. What are you talking about? About. you want to know the most recent comment on my video titled if i find a cheater the video will end skill issue you're rage baiting at that point you can't be serious if anyone talks negative about your favorite multiplayer you can't help but to write these two words i really want to buy all the skins but i can't afford it skill issue and you know what let's say that it is a skill issue let's say you were sucked into a universe and now you have a skill issue, 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 issue. Okay, and if it really was a skill issue, does that make the game any better? It doesn't matter if you're good or bad. More than likely, you're not going to have fun. U3 and most definitely U2 was known for its simplicity. Anyone could learn the mechanics. They weren't complicated. It didn't matter if you were a bad player. More than likely, you still had a good time. So why does that same logic not apply to U4? Oh, duh, because it does. It doesn't matter how good you are. It's still a bad game. That's not to say that there aren't good moments. Once in a while, you'll have a fun match, especially if you're playing with other people. Y'all niggas that, though. Y'all got it, y'all got it. <laughs> Come back here, bro. 
Bro, ain't no way. Oh my god, you got yeah. so lucky. You yeah. got so lucky. You're not getting clipped, buddy. Bro, I don't know what the- Nah, that man tapped into cheat code. But for the most part, no. Being good at this game can feel like a chore, and it's just not worth it. Very few people would dedicate hundreds, maybe even thousands of hours getting good at a multiplayer that they don't even like, especially if they go against people who play like this. It's one of the many reasons why people don't want to play. They know that if they play, they're going to have to go against these nerds who don't get off the game. And that's not a skill issue, it's common sense. A lot of people can't be bothered to try that hard and they don't get on, which makes sense. But it literally doesn't matter what I say. At the end of the day, people are still going to say it's a skill issue. And the reason I bring all this up is because this is what the majority of the U4 fan base looks like. If you play this game, you'll encounter every bit of what I just said. And honestly, it's because there really isn't much of a fan base. I mean, it's kind of there. This game has around 800, 900 daily players. And that's me being generous. Over 99% of those people don't really have an effect on the multiplayer other than just playing it. And I'm not trying to throw shots. I'm just saying that's literally what they do. They play the game and that's it. The thing is, with the past multiplayers, there were people who did things outside of just playing Uncharted. There's montages, commentaries, top five plays, clip compilations. These have hundreds of thousands of interactions of people who played Uncharted. All of these had a positive effect on the community. So I'm sure the Uncharted 4 videos were good because it had a great effect. Sully twerk videos. Bro, no one cares about this game. People care more about Sully shaking his ass in the actual gameplay. Yo, this is the funniest shit I've ever seen. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's still people who make videos on Uncharted 4. And there were bigger names that tried to make content on U4 in the past, but they stopped because they realized how bad it is. And the problem is, is that this game doesn't have any personality. It's hard to build a community whenever there's nothing to build it off of. Where's the emblems? Where's the old community tab? Where's cinema sharing? You guys remember whenever people sent videos straight to the multiplayer menu? What happened to seeing other people's levels? What happened to clan tags? What happened to being able to see anyone's stats? All of these made the game feel more alive, but you practically took them all out completely. You call yourself a multiplayer, but there's nothing for the players. It's just a multi the only thing reminiscent of u3 is uncharted tv and with there being little to nothing for the fans it begs the question is uncharted for a multiplayer a dead game the short answer yes absolutely dead as it died the same day released it was never good but realistically it depends on how you look at it because there's multiple stages to what classifies as a dead multiplayer fictitious death these are games that people insist are dead but typically it's far from it i think call of duty fits perfectly in this category a lot of people say cod is dead when in reality it's still one of the biggest games out right now it's not what it used to be there's no doubt about that but it's not going anywhere anytime soon then there's multiplayers that are in the process of an exponential death. These are multiplayers that still have a big fan base, but is going through an exponential disinterest and is losing players every day. I think Overwatch 2 fits right here. Clearly, Overwatch still has hundreds of thousands of fans, maybe even millions. It's also not going anywhere anytime soon, but the numbers are dropping each and every single day. Another category for a multiplayer is intermediate death. These are MPs that realistically are dead, but still have somewhat of a fan base. This is where U4 lands. Like I said earlier, U4 has a fan base. There's still hundreds of people who play it every single day. It's not hard to find a lobby. It's still somewhat active, but it's so unpopular that whenever it does get shut down, it's not going to affect the game gaming scene at all. And the last type of dead are multiplayers that are truly dead. I don't know, maybe Realm Royale goes right here. Is there any living person that still plays this f***ing game? Back to the intermediate death thing, clearly U4 isn't that active, but there's still people who play every day. And a handful of those people are from ranked and comp. And even though it's not that active, people still play. Now this scene is far from perfect. There's exploits, there's cheaters, there's toxicity. It doesn't seem like a great experience, but that doesn't stop them from playing every single day. And honestly, I don't know anything about comp, so what better way to gain insight than by hearing it from the comp people themselves? So cheating is obviously a huge issue in U4. It's mainly prevalent in pubs, but I also know that it happens in comp games. What happens if someone cheats? Do they face any repercussions or are they banned? What happens? It actually depends if it's just a speed glitch or even a lag switch or even a DDoS, especially when we are searching in ranks. If it's just a normal speed glitch, I try to ignore it or fight fire with fire. So does anything happen to anyone that does cheat? Well, you kind of have that reputation. We're probably just going to do it only if we find you. But to other teams, we kind of have like that mutual respect where we all play fairly most teams really just forfeit they don't give them that yeah, time to play like no point wasting time either beat them but have like a bad experience or even just lose they're not even that good it's just like waste yeah. of time and annoying when we run into lag switchers in ranked modes we'll just forfeit we'll leave speed glitchers like we all know that it's speed glitching so we may forfeit or leave but i think with speed glitching it's still you know something that you can't really do that much about so is it as frequent as let's say if i were to find a match on king of the hill yeah <laughs> i play king of the hill a lot for like the past year or so and it's like i say there's probably a speed glitcher in one out of three games at least one of them brother it is more than that i'm pretty sure it's like every game <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i mean i try to play this game like once a week and still i find cheaters like every time i play you think that since i don't play the game that often i wouldn't run into that many cheaters but no it still happens it's every time i play and i'm aware that there's different type of cronuses can you guys talk about that like different like scripts right yeah but there's tons of scripts that people use either it's anti-recoil or it's you know the increased aim assist that wobbles your aim left and right like you have multiple people using them but it's obviously incredibly hard to prove and the only way you'll prove it is 
this when people have literally admitted to doing it in a stream. We know that people are running them, but it's kind of like... I mean, yeah, but there's, really no, there's no it. point, like, to be honest, like, yeah. I don't care if I lose a cheat to, like, somebody using Chronos, like, it's just yeah, a game, anyway. You don't even have to be that good to be called a cheater, to be honest, like... Cheating accusations yeah. in this game, bro. <laughs> That's yeah, literally every even, like, It's because cheating is so prevalent that mediocre players and even above average players are gonna assume you're cheating if you're really good. This is a game where you get accused of cheating for using a Masur, having rapid fire with a f***ing Bishai. Like, the god yeah. of yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, it's <laughs> This single shot guy. Like, what hacks or cheats can you even use to get better with sniping? People don't know what they're saying, bro. They just say things. This guy uh, told me I'm like switching and I'm teleporting because I, I sort of swap. Even when I stream with hand cam, people still call me a cheater. How <laughs> am I supposed to cheat when I stream with hand cam? It, it doesn't. So another question I have is, do you guys even like U4? Or is it something you play because you feel like you have to because Naughty Dog is going to close the servers at pretty much any time now? I grew up with Uncharted. I don't want to like miss the game in the future, but I still have fun when I play like with friends. Depends how you see it. Uncharted 3 is obviously yeah. objectively better. And Uncharted yeah. 4 does have its charm to it. Like the animation work, the overall like fluidity of it is obviously uncharted 3 came out a long time ago but it's there's nothing like uncharted 4 there's nothing that that's fluid as smooth and as well animated it just has proper animations all the guns feel different like it has all of these things that every other third person shooter lacks like row company garbage by comparison yeah i totally agree with that but mechanically i think this game is a mess with how much you four try to copy faction with the mysticals and sidekicks, yeah, sorry, the sidekicks <laughs> and i mean some of the mechanics are decent i would say the mysticals could work in the, with the kickback system sidekicks yeah. should be out of the game entirely <laughs> but heavy weapons should be on the map they could have just kept the same thing they used but added just throw on the mysticals and stuff like kickback system so there's this one guy i want to bring up his name is hey name what he's big in the comp scene and i know he has a very controversial past what do you guys think about him I'm not that close right to him, but the organizers for the called E-League or UMPL recently, but it's been inactive since a couple it's of been months. Dead. Yeah, some moderation for that, but it's been so inactive. He essentially has been hosting like a TDM league that's like first 100 and it's 5v5. Yeah. It's not very competitive, but it is something that he's been trying to do that's like more of a league thing. So I have respect yeah, for that. Important. Yeah, I was under the assumption that a lot of people don't like him. It's like because it. the guy acts like an incessant asshole all the time. Like he never stops talking to randoms. Like he'll run into a random kid and tell him to shut the fuck up. God, you pussies. You can suck my dick. <laughs> The guy's been just talking shit to literally everyone in the game, and he says that he does it to elevate the stakes or whatever. And it's like, sure, but like you consider the fact that the other people are humans as well, and he's going around calling them dog R words and stuff like that. It's just kind of sure you're doing it to keep up this toxic act or whatever, but it's not bringing in any kind of like attention, good attention to the community or yourself. The reason he has haters is not because he's a victim and people are jealous or whatever. It's because he just acts like an asshole to everyone. Yeah, that sounds mad toxic. And speaking of toxicity, is that a vibe that's prevalent in the comp community? When you play with the same people, like with against the same people every day like kind of like as a joke you don't really get mad at it the thing is in pubs like everyone is so toxic a lot of people that play this game know who i am and they play in a way that purposely tries to make me mad and, you know once in a while that's totally fine but the reason i play the game once a week is because of how frequent it got and the amount of trolls that play this game are just annoying but is that same energy and comp there's still is people that beef with each other or like have problems like maybe from the past or something i think pubs is way more toxic than the calm community it depends people relating like on ranks yeah we are cool kind of but uh, legacy esports no Oh, bro, this is toxic as hell. Yeah, the esports is kind of like... <laughs> yeah. Stay away from those discords, okay? Stay away far away from them. You have, like, certain groups of people in this community that are super toxic, that have so many accounts, you can't even, like, really pinpoint who they are at this point. But they just gonna talk shit to everyone. Like, they may stream snipe you, they'll send hate messages, you know, they come to your stream, call you a fat, ugly kid or whatever. Like, they'll just be straight up, like, against you. It doesn't matter what you're doing at all. And these people are, are pretty common. I mean, you had them in Uncharted 3 as well. You've had them the entire time. And I have people like Slats, so specifically, that have sent me, you know, a lot of hate mails because of the fact yeah. I, once, I, once I kicked him from a party, and he started stream sniping, and he started talking sh the entire time. Eventually, he stopped because I primarily used to be shy. So when you headshot him five times, he tends to go quiet. But. <laughs> it's like you have you have some of these people that are just like straight up just haters realistically like they are a toxic bunch and they'll talk to anyone they have an indifference to everyone they just want to talk to this when i keep the drama right like it's, for them it's something that they enjoy and but you can't really entertain it honestly like what's the point what do you gain from it at some point it just becomes uh, nonsensical there's no point in doing it anymore yeah just ignore them <laughs> but um, it is a game that has a thousand players like all of these people have been festering and rotting like in a pool for like the past eight years like right. it, it's nobody's gonna break through here realistically like it may not be that much drama involved, imagine starting sports, like, and yeah. you find like the best team and in, in literally the, the best team in the game like what do you do yeah. it's a very very bad experience I'm trying to multiplayer clearly isn't that active, but clearly there's some motive to play and there's people who play it every single day. And as much as I don't like you for it, it's sad to see this because it was capable of being an amazing multiplayer. I honestly think it could have been the best multiplayer made by Naughty Dog. Now, I think some of you guys would disagree with me on that, but just look at it like this. The mysticals, the sidekicks, the downs, let's just take that all away. 
and now we're just left with the base of U4. No stupid ass cheaters, no noob friendly mechanics, just nothing but the engine. The MP devs were quite literally given this on a silver platter. The fluidity, gunplay, sound effects, just gameplay as a whole, you can't really get much better than this. You know, I guess the people who non-stop ray gun. You honestly can't blame them because it is very satisfying to kill people. There's only a couple things that are keeping it from being the best I've ever played. The recoil and bloom pattern can change. I don't think anything triggers it. It just changes whenever it wants to. It's inconsistent. It's hard to learn a recoil pattern whenever it's randomized. I don't get why they did this. I mean, maybe they didn't mean to, but I feel like that's really hard to miss, so I doubt that's the case. It reminds me of CSGO and how the bloom works in that game, but even then, I still think there's a pattern to it, or I'm just assuming it does. I've never played CSGO, but regardless, it's not good in U4. And another thing is the flinch. Again, I seriously don't know why this game has so much aim punch. It's so bad that if you're not using the booster that reduces it, you're just not going to have fun. It sucks. U3 had this problem as well, but it definitely wasn't that bad, or at least not bad enough to where you needed to rock scoped in. Honestly, I think that flinch should have just been removed completely. Maybe except for snipers, that's it. And I think that's it. Those are the only things that's holding back the gunplay. So anyway, I think something else that U4 does a great job on that a lot of people don't talk about is movement. People sleep on the movement and it sucks because I think it's really good. And no, I'm not talking about shoulder swapping or peak shooting or even weapon expert, if I'm being honest. I'm talking about moving in general, climbing, rolling, vaulting, jumping. I honestly can't think of another game where the animations are this fluid. And another mechanic that people sleep on are the ropes. Aside from the engine, the ropes are the best thing that U4 has to offer. Not only does it make traversing a little quicker and a lot more convenient, it's a mechanic that could have been U4's identity. It could have been the distinguishing factor that made it stood out amongst other multiplayers, but instead it's kind of just there. There are some maps where the hooks are so good that it's practically its entire identity. Then there's other maps where the hooks are so bad that it might as well not even be there. I mean, it definitely has an effect on the gameplay, but just not as much as it should have been. Call of Duty has slide canceling, Titanfall has jetpacks, and Uncharted 4 could have been known for the ropes. It's so good because it adds style, it adds finesse. Being able to maneuver like this feels like you're playing Spider-Man with guns. I think a lot of you guys don't understand what I'm saying, but for the people who know how to use the ropes, like they get what I'm talking about. And Weapon Expert is a big topic as well. Again, it's just one of those things that's overlooked and people don't appreciate it as much. You'd think that since U4 is a third person shooter, it'd be really cheesy and it wouldn't make that much sense. I mean, there's even first person games that don't allow jumping and aiming, but in U4, I, I don't know, it just works. I feel like the devs didn't even intend for this to be this radical of a change. They probably just saw it as another booster that won't really affect anything. And Weapon Expert is DLC, so it released after a lot of people left U4, so a lot of people didn't have a chance to use it and they never experienced how good it was. And overall, the gameplay of U4 is capable of so much, but a lot of people just don't see it. So yeah, it's sad that all this potential went to waste because U4 could have been a phenomenal game, but not Dog's involvement in U4 is even more upsetting, or uninvolvement if we're being honest. One of the biggest issues back in 2016 is that there was a huge disconnect between the developers and the fans. The MP fans wanted one thing, but the devs had a vision for something completely different. Like obviously a lot of people don't like the downs, the sidekicks, the mysticals. People wanted a classic mode so they wouldn't have to deal with all that stuff. And eventually they went through with a classic mode, but for whatever reason it was always in beta. It's simple, get rid of the stuff that we don't want and put it as a game mode. Why does it have to be in a beta? And that's the thing, we wanted simplicity, but for whatever reason they wanted to overcomplicate things. Should classic mode spawn side kicks, heavy weapons, and mysticals instead of just heavy weapons. This is the biggest red flag I've ever seen in my life. Like, are you stupid? Are you dumb? Do we have to write it out for you? We were practically begging you to make something that doesn't have any of this stuff, yet you still think that we wanted it. We wanted the old Uncharted bag, not this stupid new friendly bullshit. You know what's bad, whenever half of your updates consist of bringing back features that shouldn't have been removed in the first place. And whenever they did bring back old content and features, they did it in the worst way possible. Like even the retro maps, Trainwreck and Village. I know a lot of people don't like Village, but I do, so I personally appreciate it. But Trainwreck? Seriously, you give us train wreck we could have got molten ruins desert village old quarter high rise airstrip yemen we could have got yemen but no we get train wreck one of the most underwhelming maps in the uncharted catalog i don't care what you uncharted 2 veterans say train wreck is and always has been ass the only reason people liked it was because it was the prologue and the cover art of uncharted 2 and the reason why we didn't get the content and the features that we wanted is because naughty dog doesn't care about their multiplayers anymore at this point it's a common practice for them to abandon their multiplayer and straight up desert their mp fans they simply just don't care about us they know that we'll never be as profitable as their story telling side of things. The last time U4 had an update was on September 3rd of 2019. You know, the same day that U2 and U3 got shut down. But there wasn't anything to get excited about. It was just some bug fixes. The last update with content was back in the summer of 2017. So yeah, pretty much seven years ago. And there was an update in October of that year, but it's something that you can't even do anymore, so I don't even want to count it. It's been almost 2,500 days since Uncharted 4 has seen any new content. And you know what? Fine. No one's expecting you to update this game for eight years. It's simply not what they're known for, so it makes sense that they're not going to pump out content non-stop. But all it takes is one day, really 30 minutes to see the state that you 
Team 4 is in right now. And I've heard people defend them by saying, well, Naughty Dog doesn't have that many employees, so stop complaining about them not updating your multiplayer. That is so dismissive, and you're being so insensitive. All it takes is one person, just one employee, to glance at this multiplayer. They'll clearly see that it's in critical condition, and it just needs a little bit of help. Ban the cheaters, patch speed glitching. Just one patch to clean everything up before you inevitably shut these multiplayers down. Just that alone would make you four in factions way better. And at one point, you did care about the cheating, but then you shut down the website to report them, and it's been shut down for the past three years. So it's clear that Naughty Dog has put in pretty much zero effort into U4 recently, and they've been quiet on the topic for a while now. But believe it or not, I have a statement from Naughty Dog exclusively for this video, and they want to speak out to their multiplayer fans about how sorry they are. I'm over here stroking my dick. I got lotion on my dick. Yeah, obviously they don't give a sh They just don't care about their MP fans and it will always stay that way. It's so disgusting and distasteful that they built this entire community just to tell us to go screw off. They obviously don't care, but what's even worse is that people don't see this side of Naughty Dog. The majority of people see this great studio that makes amazing AAA titles and not the darker side that every multiplayer fan knows about. The audacity this company has to ignore something that they've built themselves and they will continue to ignore us. They will continue to push us under the rug. And now, more recently, they shut down something that we were anticipating for over a year. Wow, Naughty Dog abandoning a multiplayer. We've never seen that happen before. Like, holy sh**. I hate to have this pessimistic attitude towards everything. I really do. But how can you be so blind when you have gold right in front of your face? How did you not see the potential? How did you not see that you've made something great? Just take the initiative and it would make so many people happy. You have five different versions of these games, three of them being remasters, but having one update on your multiplayers. No, no, that's where you draw the line. Right, I'm the stupid one here. If you're aware of how Naughty Dog treats their multiplayer fans and you're still willingly defending Defending them, there is something wrong with you. You're clearly dismissive and you just have no consideration for the MP fans. You don't get what it means to be a multiplayer fan. You don't get how it feels to be ignored by the same company who made your childhood. Unless you're like a Nintendo fan or something. I'm not trying to turn this into a sob story. It's just the reality of the situation. And it's not just the abandonment, it's the detachment, it's the negligence, it's the mispotential, it's the impersonation, it's the incompetence, it's the carelessness, it's the apathy, it's the contradictions. Is Uncharted 4 multiplayer underrated? I think I've made it pretty clear where my opinion stands on this multiplayer. Uh, no, it's far from it. I think it's perfectly rated. For a game to be underrated, it not only has to be known by very few people, but it also has to be good. Factions is underrated. Uncharted 3 was underrated. Uncharted 2 was kind of underrated, but it was also really popular at one point, so not really. I think the perfect word to use here is deficient. It was very much capable of being underrated, but it's lacking so many things that it literally can't be. And I know there's going to be people who say, well, if you hate the multiplayer so much, then why do you still play it? I don't know, man, because I'm stupid. A lot of people do things and they don't know why they do it it's just what humans do i play this game once a week i might skip a week here and there because i know it's going to get shut down pretty soon i think i'm going to regret not playing whenever it's gone because that's exactly what happened with you two and you three and this game almost feels like a home in a weird way not because i like being here but because i'm comfortable whenever i play i know what to expect i grew up with you four you three and kind of you two not really i can't lie it's a breath of fresh air to play something that isn't popular because let's be honest a lot of the trending games are just brain rot at this point but honestly, ever since the cheaters took over U4, I just don't think it's worth it anymore. And plus, U4 is pretty boring. It doesn't really have much to offer. Originally, this video was going to be around 20 minutes longer, but I scrapped a lot of it because I just didn't think it was interesting. There's still a lot of things that U4 got rid of that I didn't really talk about because I didn't know where to put it. Gun pickups, call up adventures, split screen, free for all, elimination, custom heroes, high fives, buddy spawns, custom gun games. And I know there's more than that, but it was just too much. You know, too much was taken away. But anyway, the purpose of this video isn't to change anyone's opinion. I mean, it wasn't going to do that anyway. No matter what I say, there's going to be people who say U4 is one of the greatest this game still exists. If you still think U4 is amazing, you need more than just persuasion. I mean, there's people who think Machine Gun Kelly is a top 10 rapper, so no matter where you go, you're going to encounter a bad opinion. If you like U4, then keep playing it. I'm not trying to tell you what to and what not to enjoy. Just don't expect people to agree with you because, you know, it's, it's trash. And you know what? If you are one of the people who say Uncharted 4 multiplayer is amazing, how about this? Go in the comment section right now and name five good things about this multiplayer. Here, you know what? I'll give you two free ones. Cosmetics and gameplay. Now you only have to name three, and I'm confident you still can't do that. And if you do, it's probably going to be things that are very minuscule, or you're going to say, the same thing twice or it's going to be complete nonsense go ahead do it right now we'll all be looking for it i'll even pin it if you can do it and even if you don't like you for it go ahead and comment your experience because i can't lie i like seeing your guys's opinion and i know there's going to be that one jackass in the comments that's going to say this guy's crying about naughty dog not caring about their multiplayers when they make story driven campaigns you know someone who's clearly never played any of the multiplayers maybe outside of factions or u2 over a decade ago as for the future of you four uh let's be honest it's going to get shut down i'd give it another two years max i don't think much is going to happen i mean what do i know maybe naughty dog will have a change of heart and start 
caring about their multiplayer fans. So let's be realistic. That's never going to happen. Thanks for watching. This is my first time ever doing something like this. I'm definitely going to do something like this again. I really enjoyed making this video. Just not in U4 because this game sucks. I want to give a special thanks to Miltos. He helped me out with some of the video. He was like my U4 plug. Whenever I needed info, I just went to him. And I a truth. Thank you as well. You helped out with some of the info. And thank you, AV or Abby Raptor, for some of the info as well. Thank you, Shaheen, for giving me some comp gameplay that helped out immensely. Also, shout out to Berg. Without him, Chapter 1 probably wouldn't exist. He gave me his account because I literally don't have any of this stuff unlocked. So, and like I said, I plan on doing something like this again in the future. So, until then, I'll catch you guys later.